Good morning or afternoon, depending on how you're listening to this, and welcome to the HIA Silica Awareness Series Managing the Silica Risk webinar. My name is Simon Croft and I'll be your main presenter today, and thank you for making time to listen to this uh, presentation. HIA Silica Awareness Seminars have been proudly sponsored across the country as we've run these out both as a seminar and a webinar by Husqvarna Construction Products and Allen's Industrial Products and we thank them for their support for these seminars. And as part of the presentations, there's also specific presentations by Husqvarna and Allen's Industrial Products. So just an overview of the webinar. Firstly, there's a, a part of a five part series where we have a presentation by ourselves, by the Housing Industry Association about what is respirable crystalline silica and how to work safely with products containing crystalline silica. There's also another present presentation by the Australian Institute of Occupational Hygienists, a presentation by Husqvarna Construction Products and a presentation by Allen's Industrial Products as well. HA has produced some very valuable resources for, for you and these can be freely downloaded from our website and including an information sheet on silica dust hazards and solutions. So over the past year, a number of Australian workers have been diagnosed with silicosis. Silicosis is a serious irreversible lung disease caused by prolonged exposure to airborne dust that contains respirable crystalline silica. The disease causes loss of lung function, leading to shortness of breath and other serious consequences, such as a greater predisposition to heart disease and lung infections. Inhalation of respirable crystalline silica dust also poses an increased risk of lung cancer. The recent spike in silicosis cases is reported to have occurred predominantly in workers involved in the artificial stone benchtop manufacturing industry. So what is respirable crystalline silica and how to work safely with it? Crystalline silica is a natural material found in construction materials such as concrete, bricks, tiles, mortar, engineered stone, autoclaved aerated concrete, fibre cement and many other products. Exposure to crystalline silica can occur during common construction tasks such as working on concrete, brick, tiles, mortar, tile, stone or other masonry. Involved in activities such as drilling, grinding, polishing of any of those materials. However, the amount of crystalline silica in products can vary substantially. If you're not sure if a product contains crystalline silica, you should be checking the safety data sheet from the manufacturer. We'll talk a little bit about safety data sheets a little later in this presentation. As mentioned on the previous slide, the amount of crystalline silica in products can vary substantially between products. The silica content has, has a very high concentration rate in engineered manufactured stone, with some products having greater than 90% concentration rate. There are very fine particles also. Given the recent spike in incidences, state and territory governments are now looking closely at this hazard. While Australian health and safety authorities are taking action to reduce exposure and prevent further cases of silicosis. The risk of exposure to dust can be reduced considerably by avoiding dry processes that generate airborne dust. There's been audits in most states of stone benchtop fabricating facilities and moves to ban uncontrolled dry cutting, drilling, grinding and polishing. Victoria has, has banned this for engineered stone and a number of other states are likely to follow suit or in the process of doing so. That's specifically at the moment for engineered stone, but they're also looking at it for broader activities. Up to now, the main focus has been on the fabrication of stone bench top because this is where most cases of silicosis have occurred. This is in respect to the government actions that are undertaken thus far. Some have also started to check other construction activities that work with products con containing crystalline silica, such as concrete and autoclaved aerated concrete panels. Most Australian workplace health and safety authorities have prepared safety alerts and guides about how to minimise airborne dust, mostly available online. Queensland has developed a code of practice specific to the manufacture and installation of stone bench tops, while Victoria is also about to develop a compliance code, and Western Australia has developed a checklist for working with stone with stone bench tops. Safe Work Australia have also recently published a national safety guide for working with these products. 
This is just a cross section of some of the things that are available. Most states and territories have are either in the process of already developed resources on their website. So we encourage you to go onto the website and look for those resources. Nationally, a review of the workplace exposure standard for respiratory crystalline silica is also underway. The workplace exposure standard, or WES, is the airborne concentration rate of respiratory crystalline silica above which workers must not be exposed. It's a time-weighted average over an eight-hour day and a five-day working week that allows concentrations above the WES value provided they are compensated for by periods of exposure below that value. In Australia, the workplace exposure standard is mandated under health and safety laws in all jurisdictions. Safe Work Australia released a draft evaluation report for public comment earlier this year that recommended that the current workplace exposure standard of 0.1 milligrams per meter cubed be reduced down to 0 0.02 milligrams per meter cubed. Recently, there have been some council meetings of state and territory and federal WorkSafe authorities, and they have recommended to ministers that the workplace exposure standard be lowered to 0 0.05. And there's also talk of a further reduction down and transition to 0 0.02. A decision on this will be made soon, and part of that will need to include transitional arrangements. HA has some concerns that the proposed change will impact specific activities that have had no health problems reported which could, could prove unnecessarily burdensome. The impact should be fully evaluated and considered and any reduction in the WES should be specifically targeted to the products and services that have caused the current problem and be practical and pragmatic approach. So construction tasks and exposure. If workers regularly dry cut, grind, crush, drill or sweep material that contains crystalline silica without engineering controls, it is likely the exposure standard will be exceeded. However, if they only perform the tasks that involve exposure to crystalline silica for a very short period of time, it is unlikely the exposure standard will be exceeded. An example is overhead drilling for a total of 15 minutes or less. And as quoted on the, on the slide there, that was produced, that was um, put into a guide note by the Victorian WorkSafe Authority. However, that does not mean that those type of tasks shouldn't have some controls in place. It just gives you an indicative example of what the, um, the likely exposure would be for short duration tasks such as that. I'll now provide you a brief overview of how to control the risks and engineering controls and some systems that you can use. The Safe Work Authorities um, have developed a lot of details around this thing. So we've only just touched on this, but we'd recommend that you go after listening to this presentation to do your own research about what the rules are in your specific jurisdiction. Part of this will include looking at the thing called the hierarchy of control. The hierarchy of control includes things like looking to eliminate the hazard in the first instance and where this cannot occur, looking to isolate the hazard and putting things like engineering controls. Then part of that might include also on the hierarchy about administrative controls and right at the bottom of the, the hierarchy being personal protective equipment. Personal protective equipment could also be used to, to supplement or be used in conjunction with those other controls. The hierarchy, as, as the term is noted, it looks to the highest order measures in the first instance all the way down to the lowest order measures. Um, so applying that hierarchy. And whilst it's specific for silica, it's also applicable to other construction activity tasks. So about controlling risks associated with crystalline silica dust. Where it's reason, not reasonably practical to eliminate the risk, it must be reduced as far as reasonably practicable. Suitable dust control measures include dust extraction and capture at the source and water presence and water suppression. Untool dust extraction. Integrated dust extraction devices are available for some hound hound tools. They are fitted directly onto the tool to automatically collect and filter the dust through a class H Class M dust extraction unit. One effective form involves LEB system, consisting of several individual parts, the tool, the capture hood, the dust class, MOH extraction unit and tubing. Integrated dust extraction devices are available for some handheld tools. These self-contained units are fitted directly onto the tool and where they automatically filter and collect dust. On-tool water suppression. 
This is where the tool is fitted with an integrated water delivery system that continually supplies water. The resultant slurry should be cleaned up in a manner that does not generate dust. Respiratory protective equipment. Where engineering controls have been implemented so far as reasonably practicable, respiratory protection can be effective in controlling exposure to crystalline silica. You need to ensure that facial fit testing and a maintenance program is in place. You must ensure the adequate facial fit of masks. Half face respirators, whereas need to be clean shaven, no beard or facial stubble. Workers must be trained in how to use and maintain the respiratory protective equipment. One of the other presenters, Allen's Industrial Products, will provide more detail on fit testing and on the different types of masks that are available in this present series of webinars. Administrative controls. Controlling exposure during cleanup. Use a dust class M or H vacuum cleaner or web methods to clean dusty floors or surfaces. Do not dry sweep or use compressed air. Avoid taking dusty work clothes home and launder work clothes at the workplace or commercial laundry or isolating them out rather than having them go in with general clean, general laundering of, of clothes. Training. Workers need to be given appropriate information, instruction and training on crystalline silica hazards and risks, how to effectively use control measures to reduce airborne dust, how to fit, use and maintain the RPE, and how to dispose of waste. Air monitoring and health monitoring. Air monitoring may be required if there is uncertainty on whether the exposure standard is being exceeded or there are concerns that engineering controls are not adequate. Health monitoring. Health monitoring is required for employees who are exposed to silica dust, not taking account of, of any respiratory protection at levels likely to exceed the extreme exposure standard. Health monitoring must be performed under the supervision of a registered medical practitioner, and where health monitoring is required, it should be completed before job placement and at least every two years. Safety data sheets. If you're not sure if a product contains crystalline silica, check the safety data sheets. Safety data sheets outline the recommended safe work practices for working with the material. It will give you things like cutting practices, cleanup, handling, and all these types of things. A number of manufacturers have also been updating their, their safety data sheets to be specifically containing information about silica or to be specific to silica. Here's just a cross section of these on, the, on this slide and their links to those. As mentioned earlier, HA has produced a range of resources that are available to you about silica dust and solutions. And, so, and similarly, the WorkSafe authorities around the country have produced a range of resources as well, which are generally freely available and on their website. Just going to give you a little bit of information now about how HA Safety Services and how we can help. HA Safety is a national team of safety experts who can provide you with practical safety solutions and support with safety compliance advice, strategies for contractor and employee management, managing on-site incidents, and providing safety tender information. HA Safety solutions include providing general safety advice, developing business-specific safety systems and implementing them, delivering safety training to employees, for example, site supervisors and contractors, conducting site inspections and reports, assisting with the development of safe work method statements and many more statement services. For more information, call 1300 650 620 or visit HA's website. Again, these presentations have been part of a national series of seminars that HA has delivered these around the country in many regional areas. And we've done, done approximately 25 of these presentations around the country. We've had over 700 people attend these seminars and provide them with a range of information on these, on these, as well as on these webinars. We couldn't do this without our general support of our sponsors, Husqvarna and Allen's Industrial Products, so we thank them for their support. I thank you for listening into this webinar, and if you're wanting for more information, 
please click on the HA web website or give us a call. And thank you for your time today.